President-elect Nane Kufuado joins in National Muslim Prayer of Thanksgiving. Ministries, departments and agencies pledge to uphold rights of migrants, especially women, who are trafficked. Hello, good evening. This is News Our Life on GBC 24, your own news channel and GTV. My name is Micheline Taka. And my name is Akbene Avo Ajaja. Thank you so much for joining us for the news. In the details, the president-elect says Ghana is a country of peace and he will do everything within his power to maintain and guard what the country currently enjoys. At a national Muslim prayer of Thanksgiving at the Abusukai Central Mosque in Accra, Nani Kufuado also called on all Ghanaians to stand shoulder to shoulder to help protect his priceless gift that many often take for granted. The mosque was filled to capacity for the Friday Juma prayers. Before the commencement of their campaign, the president-elect Nane Kufuadu and the incoming vice president, Dr. Muhammad Baumia, came here to seek for God's blessings. A week ago, the Electoral Commission's chairperson, Madame Shaloto Say, declared Nane Kufuadu winner of the 2016 elections, an indication that their prayers have been answered, hence their visit to the mosque. The Friday prayers lasted for only a few minutes, after which the National Chief Imam Sheikh Osman Sharbutu held a special ceremony for them. The office of the National Chief Imam commended Nane Kufuadu and Dr. Muhammad Baumia for coming back to pay respect to Allah for their victory. The incoming Vice President Dr. Muhammad Baumia thanked the Muslim community for their support and votes during the elections. He said the MPP attaches great importance to the Muslim communities. He added that the first budget of Nane Kufuadu's administration will cater for the development of the Zungu communities and will see to the regenerating and reviving of Muslim dominated areas. We want peace and unity amongst all religions in God, Christians and Muslims working together in harmony so that we can conquer the enemy of poverty. And that is what we are going to do. I ask that you pray for us, you work with us, bring everybody together, whether you were NDC or MPP or NDP. Now we are all together, one in, in United in, as Ghanaians. Let's work for the success of Mother Ghana. The National Chief Imam Sheikh Osman Nuh Sharbutu assured Nane Kufuadu and Dr. Baumia of his continued support and prayers. Nane Kufuadu thanked Allah for the blessings bestowed on him and his party for their success in the elections. He assured Ghanaians that he will deliver on his campaign promises. The important part of the peace of our country is the peaceful coexistence that has lasted for generations and generations between people of the Christian faith, like myself, and people of the Islamic faith, like Muhammad Baumia. That peaceful, that peaceful coexistence is something that is basic to the peace and stability of our country. And we pray to Almighty God, long may it continue. The second is that all the things I told the people of Ghana, the God willing, if they voted for me, that I will do. I will assure you, we are going to do all the things that we said we are going to do. The National Chief Imam said a special prayer for the income administration to enable it to summon the challenges ahead. Seven ministries, departments and agencies have pledged to continue to uphold the rights of migrants, especially women who are trafficked for domestic work. In a joint statement to mark International Migrants Day and International Organization for Migrants at 65, the organizations called for increased awareness on the plight of all vulnerable Ghanaian migrants. A report by Shelley Bewa. One in seven people are migrants, with a surge of forced displacement casting a dark shadow over the reality of a world on the move. More people today are displaced from their homes than ever before in history. In Ghana, women and young girls are increasingly recruited through licensed 
and unlicensed recruitment agencies for domestic work in various countries. The International Organization for Migration, IOM, is however worried about reports of exploitation and abuse. As we celebrate our 65th anniversary, we are definitely not thinking about how to limit migration, but how to harness the benefits of migration. And it is a very visible, very strong public expression of our commitment to protect Ghanaian migrant workers and to make sure that their international trafficking is something that we will not see expand, but reduce drastically in the coming years. This year has become the deadliest for migrants crossing the Mediterranean bound for Europe with those seeking to make the journey from Libya at greatest risks. At least 3,800 people have died, making 2016 the deadliest ever. The UN resident coordinator Christine evans Clock says it's time to move out of emergency mode and engage in serious discussions. Migration is anchored in the Sustainable Development Goal number 10, which aims to reduce inequality within and between countries. And this implies action across all aspects of migration. And this year, the government of Ghana adopted such a policy, and we're very proud about that. The National Policy on Migration is the first time in history of Ghana the government has formulated a comprehensive policy to guide management of internal, interregional, and international migration. The joint statement on the occasion of International Migrants Day includes provision of assistance for voluntary return and reintegration of those stranded, development and launch of a national migration policy for Ghana, and the establishment of a unit at the Kotoka Airport to help identify potential victims of trafficking. International Migrants Day which falls on December 18th, is being celebrated at a time that the number of refugees is now pegged at 65 million. For GBC24, Shelley Bewa reporting. Persons with disability are pushing for minority groups, including the physically challenged, to be considered for positions of influence in national development. They added that persons with disability have the qualifications and competence and can perform credibly if given the opportunity. The call comes at a time that the newly elected NPP government is yet to form its cabinet. We are about 3% of the, what do you call it, the population. So I think it will not be bad if we have about 3% of the key appointments of a political, uh, the current government coming from the disability movement. And one thing people will say is that they appoint people who are party faithful. And when we talk about party faithful, I can tell you today that we have persons with disability who are currently occupying polling station executive positions, coincidence executive positions, and even regional executive positions. So the party MPP that has just won the election has no excuse to tell us that they have not been able to find a person with disability. Now, if we take party loyalty aside and they want to talk about competence, we have the lawyers, we have the educationists up there. The, the, the qualifications are there. It's not about when they finish, then let's see what position is left. No, we want, at least maybe by the time they mention 10 minister, ministerial appointees, I think we should have a person with disability. Mountain. At times people look at the disabled person like oh, maybe he, he cannot perform, which that thing, uh, mentality, they should not have that thing because people with disabilities are very, very intelligent. We don't want them to, oh, and I, oh we have forgotten about disabled, let's go back and pick them. No, we should, they should start out with this as they are going to appoint their ministers, their decision objectives, whatsoever. They should include us with all these appointments. We don't want to be the last people. I want to be among the first. The toll booth at Fiapre in the Sunyai West district of Bonoahafu, which was set ablaze by an irate mob, has been reopened. Our correspondent, John San Arthur, visited the area and reports that the rationale behind the reopening of the booth using a temporary structure is to stem the financial loss incurred during the six day closure of the toll booth. Do 
this is the Fiat Pretol booth in Sunyani on a very cool evening. And as you can see from behind me, it's a very busy evening from both ends, right from the Brekum end and then from the Sunyani end, a very busy evening with lots of cars passing through. But um, this toll booth has a lot of history behind it. This election year on Friday, that's exactly a week ago, it was attacked in the euphoria that greeted the announcement of the victory of President-elect Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. It was set ablaze by an irate mob and um, as you can see, it's in a state of um, disrepair. It cannot be used now. But the state, as I was told by officials of the Ghana Highway Authority, was losing a lot of money. This temporary structure has been provided to stop the you know, drain of, scarcely, uh, of scarce government resources. This pro temporary structure has been provided so that money can still be earned for the state. And there's some um, security arrangements that have been put in place. For starters, they are going to be operating from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Whilst the police personnel that are actually found here will be doubled in the evenings. Um, for now, it's, it's, uh, it's a good news for the um, some vendors here because, as you know, as, as is the tradition on, at most toll booths in the country, a lot of people take the opportunity of the cars slowing down to do brisk business. Some of the uh, vendors uh, were very disheartened. We were not happy about the closure of the toll booth after the incident. And so I'm sure a lot of them are very happy now that it is back. We just hope that there will be no further disturbances here. I'm saying that because there's been a history behind the sighting of this toll booth. The, its, its, its location divides Dumesuya and then Fiapri. And so a lot of people who live beyond the toll booth complain that they end up paying much more than they should ordinarily. Because the slightest thing that they want to do across this toll booth, they have to pay. Children, taking children to school, you have to pay. Going to the market, you have to pay. And so they have been, you know, lobbying for it to be relocated. But the problem has been that all the communities along this road also do not want the toll booth to be sighted close to them. So that has been the problem. So the officials at their wits end probably have left it here. And so no wonder some uh, irate supporters of the NPP attacked it soon after the election. Now I have with me Nanama, one of the vendors here, and I want to ask her a few questions. Nanama, a brea toll booth we enye juma no na uhu no se. Oh, na ye kwa ha wun be bre, se me me ton pan no, se me ji pan no na na ye poro, na e ye ye ka. Bibian hwa no, motokas ni duwa no anse ye kwa se ju ye ju ye ju ye ju ye mwenye na kura. Ne o ha mu pa. Mi disi ya de wini aji pa. Mi disi ya omu di te ube si wano mani aji pa, anti ni ya kan se obeba wa kura dan no. Na omu ati mi aye juma ama ye. What is it? Indra no more start here. It's Indra who is business pa. Oh, Indra, me too. I dey pa. Me need you. Me call dad. Me dad. Me didi inso. Yeah, that's it pa. So as you heard from Nanama, the vendors are very happy that this toll booth is now operational and they are doing brisk business. We just hope that this will be sustained for a long time to come, so that the state can make money, vendors can make money, the Ghana Highways Authority can also do its work, and everybody will be happy. For GTV, I am John Sam Arthur at the Fiapre Toll Booth. Progress on the rehabilitation of the Ebri Ayimensa Highway that links the major road to Accra is slow and causing traffic on one side of the road. According to the Roads and Highway Ministry, the stretch of the road was to be closed to motorists for six months and opened in the first week of November 2016. However, the time given for completion of work has elapsed. This is the Ayi Mensa to Ebri Road. It is the major highway that links the eastern region to Accra. For some time now, rocks have hung dangerously on one side of the road, posing danger to vehicular movement. For this reason, the Roads and Highways Ministry announced the closure of the road for rehabilitation work to start and to correct the problem. The news team was at the site to find out progress of work.
Although the team met some workers on site, passers-by described the pace as slow, according to some residents of Ayimensa. Due to the delay, some members of the public used that stretch to exercise. This part, therefore, becomes crowded, especially over the weekend. And this, they say, is despite the fact that they are cautioned not to use that lane because of the potential danger it poses. Some drivers spoke to GBC24. Psychologically, I know... The road is under construction and it's for good of all of us. So why should I be worried? And the traffic also, so I don't think it poses any problem. Except that we have few drivers who within the exercise patients and they want to even, in caves, they still want to sort of overtake. Because of one road now, Currently, the question posed by all road users is when work will be completed for both sides of the road to be safely motorable. The people of Kushia in the central region are rolling up their sleeves to develop their community. Their plan includes making Kushia a tourism site, giving the resources in the community and ensuring that the awards get quality education. It's Asin Kushia, the capital of Asin Orenchi traditional area in the central region. The distance from Asin Fosu, the municipal capital to Kushia, is 24 kilometers and farming is the mainstay of the people in the area. The location of Kushia is through Asin Fosu to a community called Asempaneye and then takes a left turn which is about 12 kilometers to the town. From Asempaneye to Kushia one may think it is lying in one of the regional capitals and not in a small community in the central region. At the entrance of the town, there is a huge signpost, and on entering the town, one will see waste containers in different colors, indicating how Kushia has been armed against filth and its related diseases. The development has made many to conclude that Kushia has the potential of being ranked among the first five cleanest towns in Ghana. Trees have been planted along the streets, and green grass is everywhere to beautify the town. In the middle of the town is a runabout with a fountain. One unique thing about Kushia is that, instead of calling the communities by names, they are rather referred to as wards, numbering up to five. The town can boast of three government, two private basic schools, ICT center with solar panels, clinic, a police station, market, Deba Ground, Lorry Park, churches and mosques. Ghana is one of the countries in the world with a high per capita consumption in fish and the people in this area have embraced fish farming in order to create a sustainable livelihood for the youth. There is also a crocodile pond. Ushia is the capital of Orenchi traditional area which has 34 communities under its jurisdiction. Cantamanto is their festival which is celebrated once in every two years. The festival was instituted as a result of an award that was given to them by Atendanso due to the bravery of the indigenes. The population in Orechimai is about 8,000. They share common beliefs, values and norms because of their cultural background. In an interview, a mathematics teacher at the M.A. Junior High School, Kushia Justice Mensa, so the school performs well in the B.E.C., but the only challenge is that the school lacks a science laboratory. 1, 2, 2, plus 7x equals what? 6, 2, 6, 31. Assistant head teacher of the M.A. Junior High School, Kushia Collins Ejiri, appealed to the government to build a senior high school in the area in order to ensure that students who have qualified to go to SHS do not travel far. For now, we share MHHS. Our population is about um, 170. 
the government should help because anything you see in the community is purely made by the community themselves, apart from the school building that we have. This clinic, which takes care of the health needs of the people, was established in 1991 and was inaugurated by the then PNDC Secretary for Health, Colonel E.M. Oseusu. Wednesdays are days set aside for both farmers and traders to do business. Being a farming area, prices of foodstuffs are cheap compared with other towns in the central region. A cuckoo farmer, Akosua Jimado, in an interview, said what farmers in the area need is fertilizer and farming puts at affordable prices. Due to the peaceful nature of the people, the district commander of Asin Praso, Superintendent al and the Baliko, said the area has not recorded any violence during the political campaign period. I have men here working. I have five stations. I have Asim Prasu here, I have one at Kushia, I have one at Breku, and then uh, Akonfode. And once it's a farming community, the government is even encouraging the youth to go into farming. So it's a good advice then that they can get on and then save themselves. Recounting the history of the community, the Nifahenio of the Orechiman traditional area, Nanao Himiawe, said the Orechi kingdom has an emblem which depicts two dogs eating fire and standing over a shield with a crown on it. The Omahene Ehunabu Brim Praji in Sem is a lawyer by profession and is known in private life as William Jonah. He has held several positions and was once a member of the Council of State. Nana explains the rationale behind the title of his two names as well as the meaning of the name Kushia. Uh, historically, um, I believe Ajinsem was a warrior in the old um, Asin district uh, who managed to um, conquer other contestants for land. So he got the name, this person, he will take it from you uh, if you are not careful or if you are not strong enough. So that's how I believe this two got his name, Ajin Sim, uh, the snatcher. The Oman Hene also hinted that plans are afoot to build a technical and vocational institute to help train middle-level manpower for the country. With regards to scholarships, he said there is no child in Kushia who wants to go to senior high school or university and do not receive support. Back in Accra, 27 engineers have graduated from the GBC Engineering Training School in Accra. The students went through five months of intensive training and on completion, reminded to keep up with the changing trends in technology. This is the ninth batch of students to complete their training at GPC's Engineering Training School. Over five months, the students were equipped with the knowledge and expertise needed in the field of engineering. Two of the 27 students were staff of the corporation. The course prefect Augustin Asari thanked GBC for establishing the school. Most of my colleagues and I came here with little or no knowledge and different expectation of the television and radio broadcast technology industry. But after one month of intensive classroom lectures with interactive lectures, who took their time with patience and willingness to address all of the peculiar problems and challenges comforting us at various study subjects and three months of grooming on field attachment. The chairman for the occasion, Mr. Fred Kumasi, also GBC's acting director of technical production, advised the graduates to use the skills acquired and share with others. Technology is moving very fast that we also have to develop very fast to be able to catch up with the technology. And if you are not disciplined, we will not be able to make it. Apart from discipline, we need also to be committed to whatever we are doing. I believe personally that if I'm doing something, I either do it very well or I don't do it at, at all. I don't want to do it half and leave it halfway. So if I enter, I want to score 100%. I don't want 50, I don't want anything less than 60. 
I'm in to score 100%. And that is what I'm expecting all of you to do. Once you have entered into the fold, make sure that you are going to score 100% in the fold. But as the saying goes, it is not easy as we see things. The graduates were excited about putting to use the acquire skills. In the digital era, things are moving on fast. And you all know that uh, television and radio broadcasting is taking a revolution. And so coming in to be part of this intake, I've been able to equip myself to be able to undertake all digital and transmission uh, problems or researches. I'm very happy because of what I've gained in the JBC training school. And moreover, when I came in, when I came in, I had an idea, but throughout the attachment, that's going to other studios to see different, different devices over there and working with, I could see that now I'm well fully equipped to face other uh, machines outside that in the job market. The maiden edition of a teacher's award scheme in the Pristia Huni Valley District and the Takwa Nswayem municipality in the western region has taken place. The annual event is to encourage and reward teachers and basic schools to work to achieve excellence. For the teacher, being recognized for efforts is motivation to keep at it or do better. The experts say a teacher's performance reflects on his students. So, to ensure that students perform creditably, the Takwa Mine of Goldfields, Ghana, through the Goldfields Foundation and in line with its corporate social responsibility, invested in the Maiden Teachers Awards. The award categories include Best Teacher, Head Teacher of the Year, Outstanding New Teacher, Best Teacher in Remote Area, Outstanding Preschool Teacher and Lifetime Achievements. In all, there were 30 recipients. The prizes included LED TV sets, fridges and computers. The acting general manager of the Takwa Mine of Goldfields, Ghana, Mr. George Hagan, said the company will continue to invest in social interventions to ensure a marked improvement in the lives of the people. Goldfields will continue to support and contribute to the sustainable development of our communities. However, we cannot do it alone and would like to call for a stronger partnership with the municipal and district assemblies, the education directorates, and the communities to improve education in the communities. A director of the Takwa and CIA Municipal Directorate of Education, Mr. Daniel Amwa, on behalf of the recipients, commended the company for the gesture, saying it will impact on the performance of the schools. He made a passionate appeal to parents to take keen interest in educating their wards through constant interaction with their teachers. Report card. If you not for his part, the Jason Hine of the Apinto traditional area, Nana Dr. Adakwa Bidiako, reminded the company to be fair in distributing educational scholarships in their catchment areas. He urged the recipients to let their awards inspire them to give off their best. So, you want me to say, you let me answer some palano. Esebre, we are teaching here. We do not see you, but we bet we are not collecting money from them. We bet we use some money from our own school bill to get school for. It is a good price. It is a teacher for Kenya. I was here when we, when Kenya on a man you do not pay, I am a palano so I put money. Teacher, I am busy. Okay. Now this is the news live on GBC24 and GTV. Time to take a breather. We'll be back shortly with business. Do stay with us. Hello again. My name is Maurice Ogbete. It's Friday. Time to talk business. Now the International Finance Corporation, IFC, and the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency, MIGA, members of the World Bank Group, are supporting Ghana's Sankofa gas project with $517 million in debt and guarantees the project is an integrated offshore oil and natural gas project to provide reliable and affordable energy for ghana with this latest deal financing by the world bank group for the sankofa gas project exceeds 1.217 billion dollars 
Kofa Gas Project will fuel up to 1,000 megawatts of power generation, helping Ghana meet its growing energy needs and displace oil-fired power generation with a clean-burning alternative. The $7.7 billion Sankofa project will be developed by Vital Ghana and Any Ghana in partnership with the NPC. IFC has so far committed a loan of $235 million to Vital Ghana and arranging another $65 million in debt from the managed coal lending portfolio program, a loan syndications initiative that enables third-party investors to participate passively in IFC's senior loan portfolio. The IFC financing is part of a $1.35 billion loan facility provided by commercial banks, including HSBC, Société Générale, ING, Standard Chartered Bank, and UCAV. Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency, MIGA, on the other hand, has committed these commercial lenders with up to $217 million in political risk guarantees. The government says the Sankofa project is one of two transformational projects to help the country achieve its COP21 commitments for climate mitigation. Once the project starts production of gas in early 2018, it will help reduce carbon emissions in Ghana by an estimated 1.6 million metric tons annually. Sankofa is expected to generate $2.3 billion in revenue for the government every year and provide a stable, long-term source of domestic gas that will solve Ghana's chronic gas supply constraints. According to key players in the project, it demonstrates that private capital can be mobilized on a large scale to contribute to the country's energy security. Mega's guarantees will support vital Ghana's commercial borrowing needs for the project and will be issued for up to 15 years against the risks of transfer restriction including inconvertibility, breach of contract, expropriation, war and civil disturbance. Mega's political risk guarantee is a key part of the World Bank Group's long-term commitment to serve Ghana's rising demand for energy. And Christmas is fast approaching and as has been the norm, traders have positioned themselves to increase their sales. But a visit to the Makola market shows business is yet to pick up. While some traders are planning to reduce prices to attract more customers, others say they will maintain their prices. Christmas is one of the seasons traders look forward to improve upon their turnovers. As a season characterized by merrymaking and gift sharing, food items, drinks, clothing and shoes among others dominates the shopping list of customers. Christmas is just a week away and though prices of goods have not seen any jump, traders at the Makola market are complaining of low sales. Some attributed the fall in sales to the just ended elections. Business is moving at a slow pace. We hope things will get better. This year, for now, no, sales are down this year, but our expectations are high in the coming week. Despite the complaints, some traders said patronage levels have been impressive. For the election, it was a bit slow and, and things were not moving fast. But after the election, I can say things are moving faster than before. Business is booming this year compared to last year. Most of the traders are upbeat that things will change for the better as the festive occasion draws nigh, especially when salaried workers are paid from next week going. Still business live on GBC 24. And so in most advanced economies, development in the political terrain affects the capital market, including the stock exchanges. Proud to the U.S. election, for instance, prominent stock watchers warned that the Dow Jones would plunge 1,000 points if Donald Trump was elected. The exact opposite happened. 
It is one week now since Ghanaians voted for change in government, but the Ghana Stock Exchange is yet to react to the development. It's, 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 too, it's too early because we just had elections one week ago, but in other jurisdictions where this has happened, the euphoria of a new government naturally brings in uh, uh, activities on the market. Uh, we are yet to see because, like I said, it is too early for that. Some analysts believe that there remains a disconnect between the stock market and Ghana's political structure. But managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Mr. Kofi Yamwa, holds a different view. It is connected. Otherwise, we, we, otherwise we wouldn't have seen, we wouldn't have seen the negative 21 percent year to date in 2016. It's a reflection of what the country as, as, as a whole has gone through economically. While some analysts contend that the real impact of Nana Kufado's victory will be felt on the stock market in 2017 after he has been sworn in on January 7th, others are of the view that the lack of response from the market to the political changes shows that the number of Ghanaians participating on the market is on the low. They therefore call on the managers of the exchange and the economy to work extra hard to get more Ghanaians to invest on the market. At this point, we go back to the interbank market and get latest figures on how the local currency is performing. To bring you latest prices of major commodities on the international market. And that was business. Welcome to the health segment. The National Trust Holding Company has handed over a mechanized borehole to the Wager Reposarium, the facility which has a 7,000 liter water storage tank, cost 15,000 Ghana cities. The Wajir Leprosarium is situated off the Malam Katwa Road. The facility is over 20 years old and houses about 50 inmates at a time. Inadequate infrastructure and funding, as well as high utility bills, are some of challenges that the Leprosarium has had to deal with over the years. It is to help address some of the challenges that the National Trust Holding Company has provided the Leprosarium with a mechanized borehole to supply portable water to inmates. The acting managing director of National Trust Holding Company, NTHC, Mr. Francis Apanka, said the gesture is to demonstrate NTHC's commitment to support the vulnerable in society. NTHC is 40 years, and, and when you are 40, as they say, life begins at 40. You, 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 you need to, to look back uh, where you've come from and where, where you are going. Um, so we are taking stock of our business, um, we want to make a decision as to where we want to be in the next 40 years and we are doing this on two basic pillars, uh, the first one being a return to our stakeholders obviously because at the end of the day we are business and we are business to make returns to our stakeholders, our shareholders, our clients.
staff and, and of course our community. The head prefect of the Leprosarium, Madame Grace, expressed gratitude to NTHC for the gesture. Yes, yeah, that must we thank you and pray for God's blessings over Ghana. Ghana the head caregiver, Reverend Father Andrew Campbell, bemoaned the discrimination and stigmatization against cured lepers and called on all to respect the rights of lepers. Our water bill every month has been sky high. Our electricity bill is sky high. So how do we pay for all of these? Is from people who come and give me donations. If, it, if the people weren't generous, they're so generous, they help me. But I'm always begging because we're always short to take care, to make sure that these mummies and daddies are taken care of. That we don't want them to feel, you know, bad and they, we, we give them the best of medical care, the best of whatever care they want. We want to help them because we want them to know we love them. They've been shunned for so long. They've been forgotten. The NTHC plans to make donations to the Lepers Aid Committee in Kokofo in the Ashanti region. The company will climax its 40th anniversary celebrations with a Thanksgiving service on the 18th of December 2016. The 2015-2016 GFAPLB Awards Night is taking place at the Banquet Hall State House. The event will honor personalities who distinguished themselves during the season. My colleague Theophilus Sampa now joins us live with updates. Well, you most welcome to the State House of the Banquet Hall of the State House. This is where the GFA and the PLB are about to honor and deserving players who really made the Ghana Premier League very, very proud. I know for now everybody's itching to know who will become the PLB's best player for the year, who picks the CEO's accolade. But I'm here to tell you that there are lots and lots of personalities here that round from, from boxing arena to the football enclave. We have so many. And so I will soon be joined by one of the executive committee members of the PLB, that's Mr. Albert Aitekomi, to really tell us what exactly we should be expecting tonight here at, at the banquet hall of the State House. And so if you, you are just watching us, you are coming live, and currently as the GFA president that is really addressing the gathering here. And so I'll find out from Mr. Komi what we should be expecting. Uh, Mr. Mr. Komi, good to see you. You are live on GTV. Thank you. Now, share with us what are we to expect tonight well um, nothing but um, excitement uh, surprises because um, the others who are waiting for to win but um, you never know because the other principles are that uh, others have also performed very well i think that uh, in all in all we are awarding those who have done very well and i think that uh, we need to celebrate those who win and also wish the others uh, Better luck next time. We, we've seen Mediama having a lot of uh, nominees. Uh, Adrian Astas is there. What will be your pick tonight? Well, um, Mediama, you know, did very well when it comes to the African terrain. And um, in the league, also, they were third. They didn't fare badly at all. So I'm not surprised. But I think that um, Adrian and I will have uh, two nominees, including myself. Uh, we are looking forward to next season. Okay. Wish you all the best. So at the end of the day, we'll talk to you again. And so, Michelin, this is what is happening here at the State House of the Banquet Hall. This is where GFVPLB will be awarding their best players. And so, as and when the new breaks in, we'll be bringing it to you, handing it to you over to you. Thank you very much, Theoflo Sampa. Two-time CAF Beach Soccer Africa Cup of Nations winner Nigeria are through to the semi-final stage of the competition. They beat Ghana 4-3 to three on Thursday. Here are the match 4-day results. Libya 2, Senegal 10, Egypt 4, Cote d'Ivoire 2, Madagascar 1, Morocco 1, Nigeria 4, Ghana 3. Saturday's fixtures include Libya versus Cote d'Ivoire, Madagascar versus Ghana, Senegal versus Egypt, Morocco versus Nigeria.
And this is the art and entertainment segment of the news. Playwright Uncle Bo White has promised Ghanaians an exciting and unforgettable series of plays this festive season. The characters of the play are currently rehearsing to thrill the audience at the National Theatre during Roverman Productions Festival of Plays. And you want to deny me of a good chance of laughter? It's medicine, you know. Be with you, be with you. <laughs> it was time to recollect the lines of the script by the characters as they rehearsed one of their plays titled Dear God, Comma. Dear God, Comma, please let my husband understand that I am not imagining all this. Full stop. Signed. Effing. There was a man who just left here from the maintenance office responding to a call from here. Hey. You must have met him because he just left here. Oh, let me tell you what. you see? He gave me this, this, this book. I swear, but I'm not imagining things. There were cuts and retakes, a scene that is usually not evident during the real performance on stage. The Despite the challenges that come with rehearsals, the characters expressed their readiness to put up an exciting performance for the audience. We're working really hard and it is in the hard work that we have the confidence that we on the day will deliver a very good show. I promise them nothing but fun, fun, fun. I mean, this is, this is a play. In fact, all the plays in the festival are plays they would love to watch. The audience should expect to have wonderful fun. Um, this, this, this festival is not, it's like nothing they've ever experienced and with a package that we have for them I think it's going to be a blast so they should expect only the best. Uncle Ibo White is the writer and director of the plays. Five plays in all. Um, we will begin with um, Women on Fire which we did about two years ago. So that's one of the play, that's the play we are bringing from our past from the repertoire. And then um, first quarter of this year, we did um, one million pounds, so that comes back. And then we followed it up with um, Sankofa, and then Dear God, Koma, which is one we are rehearsing right now. And we we'll reject, we we'll would end it with rejected our latest play for quarter four. And that's it for the news. We'll be back at ten thirty with news tonight. Have a good evening.